Hi there, and thanks for joining me. I'm really excited to start our new training block together covering estimating of structural steel. Now there's four weeks in the month of January this year, so we're gonna bring four expository videos to you covering that subject, beginning with performing material takeoffs. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Now performing a quality and accurate material takeoff is a several step process, much like anything else. And I'm gonna break those down and cover them with you today. Beginning with a step that I call Mizen Plus. Now Mizen Plus is a French culinary term that literally means everything in its place. And it's the practice of having all of your ingredients, or in our case, project documents, already prepared and in place for your review to make sure that it's complete, total, and accurate. And here's an example of how it might look like for you. Project document preparation truly begins with project document segregation. Commonly, when you're invited to bid on a project, you'll receive a link to this information online that might have lots of it combined into single files or PDF documents. Take, for example, all the blueprints might be in one PDF document called plan sets, or all the project specifications might be in one file that's called project manual. And you should thumb through these, and you should separate them out by the information as they apply to individual trades and disciplines. That way, when you're reviewing them in the future, it's easier to locate and identify and then use the information and details that apply within them. Additionally, when addendas or revisions come out that apply to only certain sheets or plan sets or details, it's it's easier to find and replace those and that way you ensure that you have the most current and accurate information that you're working with. Plan set drawings have prefixes on them that can make it easy to identify this information by trade and discipline. For example, the architectural drawings usually begin with the letter A, whereby the structural drawings usually begin with the letter S, making it easier to find this information and combine them appropriately. In the same way, the CSI Mainmaster format helps with finding information in project manuals that applies specifically to your trade and scope of work. For example, the Division 5 is metals, and there are subsections of Division 5, including 051200, which is structural steel framing, 05500 metal fabrications, and 055213, which is pipe and tube railings. But you should go through the, the entirety of the Division 5 section and find all that applies to the scope of work that you intend to bid. By doing so, when you inevitably need to reference information contained within one document while reviewing another, it makes it much easier to locate and then use this information in a timely manner. Additionally, when you need to transfer or review this information with another in the future, having these documents properly prepared makes it much easier to do so. Now that you have this all pulled together, your next steps could look drastically different based on whether you're doing your takeoff on the computer or by hand, but they're both gonna begin the same way. So let's take a look at that. And that first step is going to be performing your markups. And that is simply the process of going through all of the plan sets and information, and you should be highlighting pertinent information, taking note of important information, and somehow identifying and excluding irrelevant information. Now this can be a very lengthy and time consuming process, but your savings comes on the back end, in that by going through all of this, you're gonna gain a complete and comprehensive understanding of the breadth and scope of work that you're doing. And when it comes time for you to start doing your takeoff, your documents are already prepared in that you can identify what it is that you need to do and need to pick up versus what it is that you don't need. And therefore that review and takeoff process is gonna be far more expedient. Now this process is going to look the same whether you're doing it by hand or on the computer. Really the only difference is whether you're using highlighters or keystrokes. But where you can get a little bit more advanced if you're using the computer for your markups and especially if you're using Bluebeam PDF software, you can add in hyperlinks, and I highly suggest that you do. And what those are, for example, as you can see that I have highlighted three different detail references here, which means that these details show information or items that pertain to my scope of work. And I have hyperlinked these, and that if I just click on them, it takes my viewer directly to what those details are. And by having this incorporated into my project documents already, 
When I've done my cursory review and markup of these drawings, I've gained a complete and comprehensive understanding of the scope of work. And now with these hyperlinks, it adds even more time savings to doing the takeoff of both the material and the labor on this project. Now lastly, and again, this really only applies if you are in fact using the computer for your markup and review, I recommend highly that you scale and calibrate each sheet within your plan set. Now again, I'm using Bluebeam PDF Viewer software, but the way that you can do that on here is you can calibrate based off of the dimensions of two known points. In here between grid lines two and four, we've identified that it's 56 feet between the two. And if I calibrate this drawing to show it as such, then when I pull a length dimension based off of what I've just calibrated, it's going to show that I have 56 feet between those two grid lines. But that also applies to any given dimension that's on here. So if I go to do a material takeoff, for example, this W1626 that is shown right here, when I pull a dimension from the outside of that to the grid line where it terminates, well, 28 plus 5, after all, is 33 feet, which is what I've provided. So again, by going through the process of establishing the scale and calibration of these sheets, when I go back and actually do my takeoff and review of this, it just expedites the whole process and makes it far more accurate because I have done all of the time and preparation to making sure that I have the things in place I need for that process. Now whether you're scaling drawings by hand or calibrating them on the computer, I will say that any dimension that's not shown on the architectural drawings but rather on a different plan set should be taken with a grain of salt. The architectural plan set always takes precedence for dimensional information and it should be checked against those. In any discrepancy that's identified, you should follow the dimensions shown on the architectural drawings versus that on any other plan set, including the structurals or the mechanicals for that matter. And if you have followed this process, preparing your project documentation by separating out plans and specifications by discipline and performing markups during your cursory review, which may include hyperlinks and calibrating or scaling drawings, you should now be ready to begin your takeoff. Let's take a look at how that should work for you. Welcome back, and next we're going to take a look at actually performing the material takeoff. Now because we've already invested our time and efforts in preparing all of our project documents and performing that minus and plus, this process should be fairly quick and painless. However, it's important that we ensure that we're both complete and accurate in our takeoff. So let's begin. Now your takeoff should be done in a structured sense, and the one that I recommend is you go from the ground up, meaning you should begin with the items that are embedded within the foundation, move up through the columns, and then into your second, third floor framing if you have any, and then into your roof. So let's begin. So again, if you are going to start at the lowest level, you're probably going to start with the anchor bolts located at your columns. And if you're taking a look at these, and if you have these details hyperlinked as conveniently as I do, then you can just follow them along and find the information you need. Here I have quantities and sizes for all of my anchor bolts, and I'm going to do the takeoff of that. Now, if you're doing your takeoff by hand, you can simply be writing this information down, let's say on a notepad. And if you're doing this on the computer, well, depending on the program you're using, there's a multitude of different ways that you can get the lengths and quantities and grades of this going. Uh, additionally, on the foundation plan, I'm going to have the column sizes located here. And so this would be the only one where I couldn't scale the drawing because this member is coming up at me, right? It's a column. It's going up uh, into the next level. I'm not just scaling across grid lines to see how tall it is per se. And this is an, a good and interesting stopping point in that when you're looking for elevations, you should always reference this information off the architecturals. So in this sense, here on the eastern side of the building, I have all of these columns located here. And I'm going to go to the architecturals, and I have this sheet so opened conveniently already, so that I can look at this building section view right here and open that up. And I'm going to look to the eastern side, which is over here, and I can find the different elevations of this roof structure. Now those columns, 
and if I match this with the grid line locations of them, are supporting these three glue lamb beams that are spanning that distance. And the roof is sloped, which means that the elevations of those columns are going to be different. So with this information, I can scale or calibrate this and find what the heights of those are to where the buckets go to hold these beams. And thereby, I can get the heights of my columns at each one of these locations. And so again, those dimensions that are provided on the architecturals do take precedence, and they're very important, especially when you're determining the overall height of any column. And these are likely the most critical and tricky dimensions you're going to need to locate while doing your material takeoff. Now the following pages and the information and detail references shown on them are going to provide the information you need to complete your material takeoff. And again, all we're getting is a, an account of what materials and what lengths, sizes, weights, and or quantities that occur within this job. And making sure that you have this done entirely is really imperative to pricing it appropriately. One of the immense advantages to performing your takeoff on the computer is you have some accountability for which members it is you've accounted for. Take for example these beams at the skylight opening framing here. If I do a takeoff on this beam, you can see that it's been properly identified as such. Whereas if you're doing this takeoff by hand, you're probably just going to be highlighting these lines and writing the information down on a notepad. Now in the event that you highlight a line and forget to write down that information, well, you really have no way of identifying your error because on your plan set, it's going to show that you had that in your takeoff, even though it's missing from your takeoff information. Whereby, if it's on the computer, there's really no way to miss it. If the line's there, then I have the beam. If I don't, then I didn't. So I can go back and find errors, if any, and hopefully, and ideally, you would find, locate, and account for those before you even perform your bid. Additionally, I'll note that an immense advantage from having already done your markup and review of your specifications before performing this material takeoff is that you should be familiar with any particular product requirements that might be stated within those from certain manufacturers or product numbers, uh, odd grades or how they need to be sourced. You should know that while performing your takeoff so that you don't then have to go back and alter that information upon its discovery because you should already be familiar with it because you performed a proper Mizen Plus. And next, we're going to prepare the nesting of our materials according to our takeoff. Now, all steel materials are sold at different minimum and maximum lengths and at different intervals. So the process of nesting is accounting for the drop or the lost materials you're going to have to purchase anyways in order to fabricate your assemblies. Because the reality is you're not going to buy them at the exact lengths that you need. So you're going to have some waste. And we need to know what that is. Now what I've done for our example today is I've completed the takeoff of the high roof area of this building. You can see on my markups all the different beams and lengths and sizes on there. And down here I have the summary of exactly that takeoff. Now if you've done yours by hand, then it's just going to be the notepad or the sheet that you have next to you with all that information written down. But if you're also doing your takeoff on the computer, you should or likely have a way of exporting this information, probably in an Excel format that's useful for you. I'm going to export this information in a CSV or comma separated values file and it's going to open up in Excel and this is going to give me a summary of all the information within my takeoff. Now this particular format gives me an awful lot more information than what I actually need on here so I'm going to remove most of this for our sake. And now I also find it best to actually align these by similar shape and size and which is what I've done now. So I rearranged this so that according to the beam sizes starting with the smallest and then going to the highest it's all going to be in order. So I can see all the quantities to the left the sizes of the actual material and then the lengths of those and next to that would be the grade. So I can go through this and I can look at these lengths and knowing what the lengths of these are sold in, I can combine these to see how many of these I can get out of uh, say longer members that can be purchased or what size members it is I need to purchase to make these even out of minimums. But by this I can compile a cut list and an order sheet and I can send that to a material supplier so that I can calculate and account for the cost of the drop materials that I have within my material takeoff. And by following all this, you're going to be well positioned to have a comprehensive understanding of the project, have a complete and accurate material takeoff, and account for even the waste of the material you have to purchase to fabricate this job.
Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and then check out our website where you can subscribe to receive videos like this every single week, bringing you only the best in steel construction education. And while you're there, be sure to check out our list of courses, providing you a deeper and more intensive study on topics just like this one. You see here at the SBC Group, it's our mission to help you know the most so that you can do your best. And finally, if you should have any questions or concerns about where you're gonna spend eternity and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you with that too. Thank you and God bless.